Um, I was asked to provide a few overview remarks about the executive order that President Obama signed on the 2nd of February. So what I've done is, is, is I've taken the executive order, broken it down, and reordered things a little bit to uh, provide a little bit of background for you. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, the National Security Council and the Office of Science and Technology Policy of the Executive Office of the President uh, tasked a group known as the Mitigation Framework Leadership Group, or MITFLAG, another federal acronym for you, uh, to study the issue of potentially improving uh, seismic safety uh, in federal buildings. And the MITFLAG, in turn, came to the National Earthquake Hazard Reduction Program and asked us to provide some perspective to them that could be used in an advisory capacity for uh, the White House in determining whether an, an executive order was appropriate and uh, if so, what, what might, it might look like. So this executive order was developed over about a 15 month period that culminated in the, uh, in the, in the executive order that was signed in February. Um, the executive order revoked two previous executive orders. For those of you who are uh, somewhat old timers to the earthquake world, uh, Executive Order 12699, which was signed in 1990, and Executive Order 12941, which was signed in 1994, were both revoked by this. And in effect, this executive order combined provisions of those two executive orders and updated them into uh, current vernacular. Um, the, the philosophy that the President uh, provided in, in the opening remarks in the, in the executive order uh, referred to strengthening our national security and resilience for the earthquake threat. And in doing that, he said that the, the executive order was intended to promote public safety, economic strength, and national security. I'm very pleased that that last phrase was uh, identical to a phrase that you'll find in the NEHRP strategic plan that we'll talk a little bit more about on Friday. Um, the executive order recognizes that the existing codes and standards, and uh, I think there's been discussion about that already today, really focus on life safety and do not go beyond that into the world of resilience. And the executive order does encourage uh, the agencies to not only look at life safety in their buildings, it requires them to do that, but it also says that they should look at going beyond that quote unquote minimum to look at the possibility of, of making their buildings more resilient than just would be provided by life safety. So breaking the uh, provisions down a little bit more for you, first of all for new construction, uh, it directs that the agencies who are building or constructing buildings that they are going to own shall use henceforth the International Building Code for uh, uh, their, their design and construction standards. And that, of course, then also refers to ASCE 7. And uh, in doing that, it updates what was provided in Executive Order 12699, which was written in the days when we didn't have the IBC. We still had three uh, regional building codes around the country. And so we made a tremendous leap forward, I think, in providing this guidance for federal agencies. For lease buildings, for buildings that are being constructed for leasing by a federal agency, those same standards apply. And for assisted or regulated buildings, uh, the agencies that are involved with that, such as the Small Business Administration, are encouraged to uh, consider using the IBC in their requirements for uh, loan purposes and things like that. For existing federal buildings, uh, the agencies were directed in their buildings that they own to use a document that is developed by the uh, Interagency Committee on Seismic Safety and Construction, and I've got it there on the slide. It's, it's document RP8, the Standards of Seismic Safety for Existing Federally Owned and Leased Buildings. Uh, that, that document is in the process of being updated right now by the Applied Technology Council uh, for uh, the ICSSC and should be published in its updated form probably within about the next uh, four to six months. Uh, for lease buildings, um, it essentially also requires that RP8 be applied for lease buildings, but there are some provisions in there for agencies that are leasing relatively small floor spaces uh, in uh, 
uh, in larger buildings that only include a, a certain amount for the federal agency that really represents only a small percentage of the building. There are no provisions in the executive order for federally assisted or regulated buildings uh, that, are, that are in the existing building stock. There are several uh, specific responsibilities that are outlined in the uh, executive order. The first is that the, it recognizes the ICSSC as the, as the leadership body for working with the entire federal government on its, its, its earthquake issues. Um, the second is that the agencies were required to designate to us at NIST uh, within uh, 30 days of the signing of the executive order their official seismic safety coordinator for uh, their agency. And we've now compiled a fairly substantial list of people at the different agencies. Uh, and uh, that is forming the basis of a, a revised uh, and, and revived ICSSC. Um, it tasks us at NIST for issuing guidelines for implementing the executive order within eight months of the, the signing of the executive order. Uh, and it tasks us at NIST with supporting the ICSSC, and it also tasks the ICSSC with updating um, the uh, RP8 document you see there at least once every six years, which roughly coincides with the updating of uh, the ASCE 41 standard, for those of you who know that document. Uh, it also requires that the agencies report to NIST uh, biennially on their progress in implementing the provisions of the executive order. My last slide is, is, is has some interesting things on it. Uh, First of all, it's important to realize that within the federal system, each agency is required uh, to manage its own programs in the construction arena. So there's no centralized direction here for the agencies. They're responsible for implementing the executive order. All we're doing at NIST through the ICSSC is providing guidelines to the agencies on how they would implement the order. Um, I think it's important to note that the agencies are encouraged to go higher than, than the normal uh, code levels in designing their buildings. And hopefully in the future, uh, if you go back to the comments that Keith Porter had a couple of hours ago, you'll see that there is some rationale for doing that that's both economic and safety related and resilience related as well. And there's a couple of exemptions provided in the uh, executive order that agency leaders can implement, and I've, I've listed those there uh, for you. They're largely related to uh, 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 national security and law enforcement purposes, and it provides the opportunity for something that would be unique to a given agency for them to ask for something to be done to allow them not to implement a particular part of the executive order. However, if you'll notice in parentheses there, uh, OMB director must be notified of that, and I can assure you the federal agencies don't like to notify the OMB director of things that they're taking exception to in any kind of directive they've got. That's not something that they are, are particularly fond of doing. So with that, um, I, that's all I, I really had in the way of prepared remarks, and I've, I've got 20 seconds to go. So. Thank you.